Wendy Dearborn here from the Laws of Attraction in Action. And this is our first podcast together. And what I thought that I would do is as a way of introducing myself and introducing the knowledge and the content that I'm sharing with you, I thought that I would do this very first podcast. Now, in regard to uh, Spreaker, this is the first time that I'm actually using this system as, yeah, this is real, this is live. I've actually um, done a couple of podcasts on here before, but nothing serious. And I decided that I was going to use this seriously. So guys, here we are, here we are. So once again, my name's Dr. Wendy Dearborn and today is, I believe, Monday the 31st of July, 2017. And it is minutes before 4 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. So guys, welcome, welcome, welcome. So let me tell you just a little bit about myself and about what I'm doing and about this particular subject, which is truly dear to my heart. I am a holistic healer. I'm also a coach and I have a doctor, a doctorate in metaphysics and a couple of, well, one other thing, but a doctor in meta, a doctorate in metaphysics, and that's where I'll I'll leave it at that. I am passionate about sharing information in regards to the laws of attraction and people understanding the laws of attraction and how to utilize them in their life, in people understanding that the universal laws of attraction aren't a one size fit all, and really and truly, it has been put across that way, but it truly isn't that way, but yet still people are using it in that fashion. And this is one of the reasons why I believe that many people have had the experience of the universal laws of attraction, not working for them. People say it doesn't work or it's hit and miss or it's inconsistent and all the other things that you hear, like that stuff doesn't really work, does it? And it really actually does work. And it works when you understand how to use it correctly. The laws of attraction aren't like anything else, excuse me, are like anything else. If you don't understand how to use a stop, a stop watch correctly, or your gas cooker or, or, or correctly, or even your car, you know, the gears in your car and blah, blah, blah. It's not going to work out right for you. And the laws of attraction are just the same. So as I said, I'm really passionate. I am really passionate about the universal laws of attraction. I'm passionate about choice. I'm passionate about life. And I'm passionate about people doing their own due diligence for their lives to figure out what it is that they want and really go for it. Once again, I am a coach and I'm an intrinsic coach, which tends to be a little bit different to the the coaches out there. I'm an intrinsic coach. I believe in what and not how, Um, but we'll get to that as we journey together, we'll get to that. So today, what am I doing today? What I wanted to talk to you about today was literally this. Is it the law or the laws of attraction? Which one's right? Well, guys, my personal story is this. At the age of 21, which was blah, 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 years ago, at the age of 21, I had a near-death experience. I'm not any different to many, many people out there. And let me just segue into this. A near-death experience, um, for all intent and purposes, I believe that people have these near-death experiences. I think everybody has their their near-death experience or their come to Jesus, come to Buddha, come to Muhammad, come to Allah, come to Elohim. I think everybody has those moments. And just because you weren't laying on somebody's gurney and them trying to, you know, defibrillate your heart back into motion, doesn't mean that you don't experience something that creates a tremendous amount of emotional trauma or you haven't experienced something from a tremendous amount of emotional trauma that has literally and I mean literally propelled you into a different dimension you're a different person blah 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 everybody I believe experiences their two by four it's just different and again I had a near-death experience and they're so commonplace now you know look 
every look a, a dime a dozen that's not the that's not the actual thing what happened to me during the process that was the thing the learning and the knowledge that i that i gained and one of the many things that i gained in addition to understanding self who understanding self in addition to understanding self the knowledge that i got uh, from that that makes me so passionate about the universal laws of attraction is greater understanding in regard to the universal laws of attraction and the power of choice. Choice is huge in our lives. And of course, as we grow, I'm going to do a podcast on choice, etc., etc. So after I had been booted back, literally booted back to earth uh, or into my body, I had some real key awakenings and the key awakenings that I ha I have is the power of choice. Now, I want to say perhaps what we 2017, I suppose I could look here on the computer, 2017, I want to say maybe 2006, the uh, secret came out. I believe it's Rhonda Byrne and, or Burns, it's either Rhonda Byrne or Rhonda Burns. And the secret came out and what this book has done for people and the law of attraction is for them to have a greater understanding um, and it, it, a greater understanding about the universal laws of attraction and it's become something of a household name. People were having conversations about this and the secret, if you've never watched it, it may be worthwhile watching because it can open your mind up to the reality that you can truly, truly, and when I say this, you can really control what happens in your life. You can't control other people, but you can have control over the things that you bring into your life, people, places, and things. And so um, the secret did this. What it didn't do was really give people hard and fast tools because one of the things also that I am passionate about is people doing their own due diligence and the author of The Secret and many other books out there, whether it be um, uh, Bob Proctor, whether wh whoever else is out there doing work, uh, Abraham Hicks, Esther and Abraham, you know, whatever's out there, it's really important to understand that you have to do your own due diligence, i.e. you have to do your own work. And this was something that I had learnt from my near-death experience. You have to do your own own due diligence you have to do the work and what that really translates to is like today I'm speaking with you and anything that you hear today anything that you hear me say today right um don't like take it just as gospel don't don't, don't take it as gospel okay make sure that um it's in alignment with who you are make sure it's in alignment with what you're thinking. Make sure that you're able to, to weave it into the tapestry of your life. You see, the name of the game, anything that you hear, is about taking it in and weaving it into your life. It's not, try, it's not about you trying to weave your life around it. It's about how you take this information and you allow it to influence you in a way that's conducive for you to grow. Many people with, with the laws of attraction, they, uh, they, they do this, they take the laws and they, they take it verbatim. And then as a result, and this is something that I hear over and over again, that beat doesn't work. It doesn't work. No, it hasn't worked. Not because the information is bad. It hasn't worked because the application isn't correct for you. So anyway, as I was saying, I'm passionate about the laws of attraction. I'm passionate about you. I'm passionate about life. Believe me, I'm actually very passionate about life. Having had that experience, it gives you a new meaning. But I'm passionate about that. And I'm passionate about people doing their own due diligence. And so the universal laws of attraction, the universal laws of attraction, it's so important to understand if it's the law, and or if it's the laws and if it is the laws does that nuance make any difference 
the difference between it being singular and plural is it important is it really that important well the way in which most people actually um, approach the universal law of attraction is just that they approach the universal law of attraction as this this sort of like one law that's a catch-all for mm, and I'm gonna say this and I'm saying this with the greatest respect a catch-all for a, a few things a few a few a few things that you need to do like gratitude like practice the universal law of gratitude like practice the universal law of visioning um, practice the universal law of forgiveness um, uh, practice those sort of the, the universal law of affirming bonding your word and this is how it's been put across well one of the things that has been neglected greatly is to explain to people that the universal law of attraction is actually one of the many universal laws plural that are out there the universal law of attraction is part of the universal laws of attraction which actually is in uh simpatico or i, I don't even know if that's the right word if it it's actually it it's actually falls in alignment with the universal law of magnetism you see it's the universal laws it's not the universal law it's the universal laws there are depending on what country you are in 26 letters in this particular english la la alphabet that i speak there are 21 uh, consonants and five vowels this is what makes up your law this is what makes up your laws you see everything that you do everything that you say creates a vibrationary force that goes forth you transmit it and it is received and when it's received it is sent back to you you know for all of those who are scripture based spiritual based metaphysically based you understand the concept that your word will not return to you void and this is whether you speak the word or you think the word and the more passion you have behind it is that the, the greater the force that it is sent out there and the greater the force that will send it back so it's really important to understand that you are a living breathing universal creator of laws so the 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 universe and hopefully guys um that that was okay hopefully i expressed that okay sometimes i i i don't actually hear myself most of what i do isn't scripted i have bullet points of things that i need to um i want to touch on but for the most part my what i do isn't scripted so i'm hoping that i hit on that point with the true understanding that you understand how powerful your words are you understand how powerful your words are and that your words are continuously making laws for you and these laws go forth they go go out there they transmitted into the universal ethos where they move into form they come into form they come into a tangible form and this form is what impacts your life it's that energy that you put out words are energy they're energetic things you know people will say sticks and stones may break my bones but words can never hurt me i tell you what the sticks and stones any day words can transmute your life for the good and or the bad so that being said guys understand that you are continuously and constantly making laws for yourself through your spoken words through your actions which are words performed and your deeds which are words performed and however passionate however um how much belief and belief can be anger it can be joy it can be love it can be hate whatever the emotion is the intensity of the emotion dictates 
how it is sent out there into the ethos and how it comes back to you. Okay, so understanding the difference between the singular and the plural is, is monumental. As I said a little while ago, we have been taught and continue to be taught that it's the universal law. Well, it's not. It's the universal laws. Okay. The first universal law, and although I'm not going to go into this in great detail today, but the first universal law there is, is the universal law of choice. Your life here in this particular incarnation, and I don't care where you are, you, you, you could be in the um, Amazon, um, you could be in Silicon Valley in, in California. I mean, you, you could be on Mount Kilimanjaro. I don't care where you are. Your life is predicated upon the choices that you make. Nothing happens in your life save you make a choice. So everything that has happened in your life to date is predicated, is based upon the choices that you have made. Don't ever get that twisted. Now, I lecture once a week to a group of ladies and I, I lecture and we talk. And I actually had to change my style with this because I lecture to women at a organization called Shade Tree. And that's here in Las Vegas. And it's for women um, displaced, ab abused and displaced women, children and pets, as well as, um, you know, women who have, you know, come up on hard times and who are for all intent and purposes, they're displaced, they're homeless. And so um, I lecture weekly and I had to change the way in which I, I approach this because many people based on what they were going through could not see that their choices had brought them to where they are. Now, one of the things I'd like to say at this moment, at this point, is anything that has happened to you, anything that has happened to you, I am not condoning what anybody has done to you, to your person, to, to your loved ones, to your family, to your extended family, to your colleagues, to the people of your church, to the, you know, to, to the people that you know, to your organizations, to your country, to mankind, to the earth. Understand me clearly. I am not condoning bad, evil, heinous, wrong behavior. What I am saying to you is wherever you find yourself in life, and this can be the pill. This is this is how be, before this I used to be brutal. So this is the gentle. The, the, this is the gentle version, where you find yourself in life, is truly predicated upon the choice, the first universal law. It's predicated upon the choice that you have made. Now you see where you find yourself in life, you yeah. then get to choose whether. You feel this is right, wrong, indifferent. You get to choose if you do the blame game. You get to choose. That's okay. And this is something that we will address as we journey together, learning about the universal laws together. And let me just say this. I learned too. Every time I do something, every time I do a podcast, because I've been doing a weekly podcast on um, Blog Talk Radio for nearly nine years. And every week I do a podcast, I learn something new, something new, maybe to myself or something comes out that I needed to hear. So as we journey together, we will actually look at that in more detail. But for now, understand that wherever you find yourself in life, good or bad, you have put yourself in those crosshairs by a choice that you made. Now, it doesn't mean that the choice was right or the choice was wrong. It means that you take ownership of your life. And that's a huge one. We're going to look at the universal law of ownership, accountability and responsibility, but that'll be later on. But you take ownership for your life. And again, it can be really hard because sometimes you'll say to yourself or sometimes, you know, all, all I did was, was go, go to the store. You know, I, I didn't expect my car to be jacked or I didn't expect this to happen. I just went to the store. But you see, it's not what happened to you. Ownership is owning 
that you chose to go to the store. It doesn't make you at fault. And that's the thing. People are always looking for fault. They're always looking to assign blame. It doesn't put you at fault. It just means you made a choice. Where the power comes in is what are you going to do from this point forward? And so there's a couple of people that I, I will share with you what's happened to them. And one, one lady, it was absolutely heinous. It was what happened to her, absolutely heinous. And I'm going to share that with you and share with you about her ability to choose for self and liberate self. Now, I, I, I want you guys to understand, I'm not talking about not being emotional because that uh, emotions are, are really wonderful. We're a little bit muc mercurial, you know, we go up and down the scale a little bit and, you know, but emotions have their place in our lives and a strong place. You know, they're like an, a, a, a barometer. They tell us things, although hear me clearly, as much as possible, and I struggle with this myself, believe me, I do try and I'm suggesting trying not to make choices based on an emotional knee-jerk reaction because you see today's emotions and feelings they won't be the same tomorrow or next year and so therefore it's about being able to take a breath step back and uh, and make a choice but anyway our lives are built one choice at a time choice is the first in the universal laws laws plural of attraction nothing happens Save you make a choice. And for those who are metaphysically based, scripture based, uh, spiritually based, new thought based, this is something that is blatantly clear. In order for you to get something, in order for you to have that interaction with the creator known to me as God or whomever your chosen deity is, so your chosen God, you have to do something. That's a choice. In, in, in the word, the Bible, it says, you know, you step to God and God will step to you. God just doesn't step to you. You have to make a step. And another thing, you're in partnership with God. You're in co-creation with God. But that's a whole nother podcast by itself. So you need to make a choice. So understanding that every choice that you make is, is part of the universal laws of attraction is huge but we will discuss choice i i think that will be the first law that we speak about because it it becomes that law and then everything else it's that law and then everything else because nothing happens without you making a choice the universal laws as i said about the alphabet i spoke about that so the universal laws and i say laws plural they work like this. You make your choice, yada, 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 fill in the blank. You made a choice. And from there, you start your process. You know, I had posted something on one of the many groups out there. And I posted about the universal law of secrecy and the universal law of silence. And I, I'm not talking about being secret, secret, uh, secretive in a negative, malicious or Machiavellian way. I'm talking about understanding the power of um, secrecy. I'm not talking about being silent at the detriment of self and others. I'm talking about empowering yourself through silence. And so I mentioned this and so many people are like, well, what is that? What, what are you talking about? You know, there, there is a universal law of silence, universal law of secrecy, universal law of equipoise and or balance. You need balance in your life and balance means you will be constantly moving. Balance isn't, isn't something that's stationary. That's the universal law of stillness. You see, there's, there's, there's the, the, the common things that people actually know about are the universal law of gratitude, universal law of forgiveness, the universal law of affirmations. They, these are the common things that people know about. When, when people talk about, um, you know, authors and, and um, experts, they talk about the universal law. They always talk about gratitude and gratitude is huge. There are laws that I believe to be the underpinning of what we do. And that's one of the underpinnings. It's one of those pillars. But you see, what gratitude does for you, it changes your vibration. And in changing your vibration, it says that what I have is enough. 
What I have is enough. I am content with this. And so therefore in my content state, I am truly okay if more comes this way. Gratitude says that you are no longer kind of on that scrap heap pile or trying to get this to work and yada yada. No, you're no longer there. You are in oneness with what you have. You see it for, for its, its fullness and its entirety. You're okay with what has shown up on your screen of space. And see, what that does is instead of you having this dialogue, this internal dialogue that's, oh my God, I need this. I, I should have done this. Oh, what the da, 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 do they think? And da, da. You know, the conversation that we have going on inside our head, it prevents that from moving forward. It prevents that from preventing us from receiving our blessings. It prevents us from receiving our manifestations. And so as a result, you have the universal law of space. And the universal law of space isn't just um, per se as in feng shui, creating a dynamic where energy can flow freely and creating space so energy can, can flow um, freely and creating conducive space. No, it, it's, it's more than that. You see, the universal law of, of space is all about making room. It's about making room. Actually, it's about moving things out of form so things can come into form. But that's definitely a law that we'll talk about. And, you know, guys, I have done uh, some tutorials and you can definitely find these at the laws, plural, of attraction in action dot com. And if you go to how how to use the universal laws, there are a couple of uh, tutorials. They're free, free tutorials about using the universal laws. Actually, there's one about the universal law of secrecy and silence. That's there too. You'll be able to see that. And again, they're free tutorials at the laws of attraction in action.com. So guys, understand that the laws as we are learning and as we are growing and knowing them to be, they interlock just like a puzzle. They interlock, they interlock. And as they interlock, they form this beautiful picture. You know, like if you've done a puzzle, you put the pieces together and it forms, it forms this picture. And it's the same thing with the universal laws, plural of attraction. I, 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 I become, um, as I say, I, I become really impassioned when, when people, you know, they, 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 they talk about the universal laws, excuse me, the universal law, not understanding, and I'm going back here, I'm backtracking that they are the law, not understanding that every word, every action, every deed that is thought in their imagination, every word that is created, that comes out of their mouth to begin the expression of that is a law. We are made by the law. Again, for those who are scripture based, we are made by the word. In the beginning was the word. The universal creator said, let there be light. But on the back of that, understanding that the universal creator had in the creator's mind, what light needed to look like. And not only what light needed to look like, but what light needed to do for us. And I'm talking about the physical light. And then if you want to take it to the spiritual, what does the spiritual light need to do for us? And so guys, it's always deeper. You can always go deeper and deeper. So is it the universal law or the laws of attraction. Understanding the nuance between the singular and the plural is important. And this is important because this will gauge or this will dictate how you engage with the universal creator. Many people, as I started out saying before, have said to me, you know, Dr. D, you know, Dr. D, I can't, um, I can't, uh, 
uh, you know, sort of manifest on a regular basis. I find it really hard to manifest on a regular basis. I, I don't, you know, it, it just doesn't work for me. You know, this stuff is bogus. People say it works and all of that, but it doesn't work. The reality is it does work. It does work. And my thing is, don't take my word for it. Do not take my word for it. As they say, the proof of the pudding is in the eating. Take your own word because your own word is the most powerful thing that you've got going for you. And as we journey through life, you're going to hear me say this frequently. The first verse voice that you ever heard was your own. And the last voice before you make your transition that you will hear will be your own. That's how powerful you are. So people will say to me, you know, this doesn't work. No, it's not working at this moment in time because it needs to be tweaked. You know, if you, if you drove, if you drive a car, if you ride a bicycle, if you are walking, if you are talking, you had to learn and you had to learn this. You had to learn how to do this. This is the same. This is the same thing. It's the, the same truth that surrounds the universal laws. So guys, moving forward, I really am hoping that um, you are able to take this to you, within you, within meditation, and, and just look at what I've said. Replay this podcast, look at what I've said, and, and think about it, contemplate it, pray, or pray about it, or should I say, contemplate, meditate about it. See how you feel. And if it doesn't feel right, then perhaps this isn't for you. This isn't you. This isn't for you. That being said, I know with a certainty the fact that I am here, that out there, then is something for you that will give you the same information that I'm giving to you. They'll just serve it up differently. But I know Again, because I'm doing what I'm doing. I know out there, the information is there for you. Because my belief is as such that you will never, you came here or was incarnated here, have been incarnated here. And everything that you need is already here. What we as a people need to do is to just reach out and take it. Just reach out and take it. And knowing what you want is the biggest part. And many people will say, well, that's the biggest problem. I don't really know what I want. And that those are things that as we journey through this, and I don't know how long this is gonna be. I don't know if this is gonna be one podcast, a hundred podcasts, I don't know. All I do know is that I was directed to do this and I'm doing it. So. That being said, guys, is there, is it the law or the laws of attraction? It is the laws, plural. It's the laws. As I stated before, the law of attraction makes up the laws of attraction. And I know people will say, well, they say that the laws of attraction are, are you know, several laws. There are thousands of laws. Think of, think of all the things that you do on a daily basis. You're creating a law for yourself or you're creating laws for yourself. Your th thoughts, words, deeds, and actions. So yeah, it's as different as day and night. Law and laws, it's as different. And the first universal law is the universal law of choice. So guys, in parting, because as I said, this was just a, a brief introduction as to what I do in parting. What I would say to you is this, check out the website, the laws of attraction in action.com and there go to how to use the universal laws of attraction. There are some free tutorials and um, that will give you um, a, a, a wider understanding of what I'm speaking about. And also if you feel so inclined, Check out the, the Facebook group. Check out the Facebook group. And as long as, oh, let me just say this about the Facebook group. Mm. I really vet people 
I really do vet people. Um, not just anybody and any anybody can, can come into the group. For me, as it's my intention, the group is truly about people who are wanting to make change. Whether they're using other people's, uh, you know, other people's um, modalities and weaving that into the fabric of their life, etc., etc. I am truly looking for people who are wanting change and want to participate in the change in their life. It's really, you, it, it, it's so surprising. There are so many people who want change, but they don't want to participate in their life. And that's for a variety of reasons. Uh, from a psychological standpoint, we're not actually reared that way. We're reared to be told what to do, which is why most people don't like it because it inherently goes against the grain of who we are. But that in itself is another bro uh, another podcast. So guys, the laws of attraction, is it the law or the laws? It's the laws. It's the laws. It truly is the laws. So for you, what I am truly hoping that you take this information, you roll it around your head, you, you, you meditate on it you contemplate it and see how it fits into your world you don't fit around this you fit it into your world also i would like you at this point to kind of start looking at the choices that you have made in your life and see where good bad or indifferent see where your choices have brought you if you're old enough you can definitely look back and see that if you're kind of youngish oldish you can kind of sort of see it if you're really young, you tend not to be able to see this um, because the young tend to feel so put upon and a little bit persecuted, primarily because they're not getting what they want. But that being said, guys, I do appreciate you. I love you guys. Thank you so much for listening. My name's Dr. Wendy Dearborn. You can find me at the laws of attraction in action, uh, com. If you have any questions, please feel free to email me at Dr. Wendy Dearborn at the laws of attraction in action.com and guys i'm looking forward to going on this journey with you and i think instead of guys i'm from this point forward i'm going to call you attractioners because this is who we are we're attractioners we are attracting what we want in our life so until next time guys thank you so much for taking the time out to listen i'm dr wendy dearborn and uh you can find me at the laws of attraction in action.com. So until next time, guys, peace.